Where do we begin? Instructional design is a complex practice. It generally involves finding the most effective ways to provide knowledge and skills to learners. Tackling big and complex processes is difficult to do unless we break them down into their parts. Let's take a few minutes to look at instructional design, models of instructional design, and more specifically, the ADDIE model of instructional design. Let's start with looking at a few terms. What is instruction? What is training? What is teaching? And what is education? We often use these terms in a broad sense to describe ways in which people learn. Start with instruction. What is your definition of instruction? Experts such as Driscoll have defined instruction as intentional facilitation of learning toward identified learning goals. Intentional facilitation, identified learning goals? That sounds like a plan. For our purposes, let's use this definition of instruction. Purposeful activity intended to cause, guide, or support learning. This definition will serve us in that we see, we'll see instruction as something that has a purpose and intent, and the goal of the instruction is to support learning. So moving forward, when we think of instruction, let's think purposeful activity intended to cause, guide, or support learning. How about training? What is training? Smith and Reagan tell us that we often think of training as instructional experiences that are focused on individuals acquiring very specific skills that will likely be applied almost immediately. Think of jobs. We often think of training as preparing people for jobs. But we also think of training when we are providing specific skills to learners to use in life, don't we? Training is specific and focused and is often a subset of some larger objective. We've already defined instruction and often people use the terms teaching and instruction interchangeably. While we've defined instruction as purposeful activity intended to cause, guide, or support learning, Let's think of teaching as learning experiences that are facilitated by a human being or actual teacher. So instruction includes all experiences that are facilitated by some form of support and teaching is that part of instruction where a teacher is essential to the instruction. Some forms of training may include a teacher, so teaching and training may overlap. As a whole, instruction includes both training and teaching. How is the term education defined? We sometimes feel like education occurs without a teacher or without training, correct? Sometimes education is very formal, such as that which occurs in the classroom. Sometimes education is informal, such as those life experiences from which we learn. In whole, education is a broad term, so we see instruction, training, and teaching as some, said, some subset of education, don't we? Let's pause for a moment and ask why the teaching spectrum actually expands past the instruction spectrum and into the whole of education. Why do you think teaching is depicted that way here? Well, I'd suggest that teaching sometimes occurs outside of instruction, yet is still within the realm of education. If instruction is focused educational experiences, then we know that there are times when teaching happens outside of a focused experience, don't we? How about those times when a person teaches another about something because of their actions? That's teaching, isn't it? Well, this diagram, adapted from Smith and Reagan, shows us some of the potential relationships between the terms we are setting up as we move into our study of instructional design. We have a working definition of instruction how about design? What is design? A lookup of the word design in a dictionary will produce something like this. A plan or drawing produced to show the look and function or workings of something. Take instruction and look at how instruction is designed or how an end product is produced. If instruction is purposeful activity intended to cause, guide, or support learning, instructional design is the plan of the purposeful activity. 
The main goal of instructional design model or process is to construct a learning environment in order to provide the learners with the conditions that support the desired learning process. Our focus will be an instructional design model called ADDIE. A model is a simplified representation used to explain the workings of a real-world system or event. In our case, it's instructional design. There are multiple models of instructional design, and over the years there have been variations on many models. Some experts use a rapid prototyping approach to instructional design. Others may use an OAR model or even a backward design model. There are several. The ADDI model has been a very popular model and some experts have made their own version of the ADDI model. Smith and Reagan created their own take on ADDI. So did Morris, Ross, and Kemp. Dick and Carrie and Carrie have produced their version of the ADDI model, which has been adopted by many. We will be studying the principles of instructional design using the ADDIE model, and for most of what we'll do, we'll look very much like the Dick and Carey model. Let's take a look at the ADDIE model. The ADDIE model of instructional design is a systematic instructional design model consisting of five phases. Analysis, Design, Development, Implementation, and Evaluation. The model's original authors are unknown, but there are multiple ver variations and versions of the model today. With this model, each step of the process feeds the next. During the analysis phase, the designer identifies many things, including the learning problem, goals and objectives, the needs of the learner, the existing knowledge of the learner, the environment in which learning will take place, and constraints. Additionally, during the analysis phase, the designer will look at delivery options. The key word to this phase of the instructional design process is identify. During the design phase, the designer goes through the process of specifying learning objectives, storyboards, prototypes, the user interface, and the content. The key word in this phase of the process is specify. During the development phase, the content and the learning materials are produced, all based on the design phase. The keyword for this phase is produce. During the fourth phase, the implementation phase, the content from phase three is put into production. The training for the learners and for the instruction, instructor or teacher are put into place and used. During the final and fifth phase, the evaluation phase, the designer assesses criteria used and gathers learner feedback. There are two types of evaluation that are conducted during this phase, formative evaluations and summative evaluations. Formative evaluations are conducted throughout with the main purpose of looking to continuously improve the program or instruction. Summative evaluation, in contrast, consists of administering criteria-based assessments, and gathering of learner feedback. So there you have it, the five phases of the EDI model of instructional design. Remember there are five phases, analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation. Dick and Carrie and Carrie take the EDI model as a base with its five phases and implement a variation. The first three phases, analysis, design, and development, are very similar. Unlike the ADDIE model, Dick and Carey combine the implementation and evaluation phases into one. Dick and Carey also add an additional phase in their model and call it revision. The Dick and Carey model is one that is very fluid. Revision constantly takes place and evaluation is conducted along the way rather than at a single moment in time. That completes our short review of instructional design, models of instructional design, and the ADDIE model of instructional design. Let's get ready to begin using this model to help us design our own instruction.